Shunt trip breakers cannot be daisy chained. Shunt trip breakers have a specific operating mechanism that requires a dedicated trip wire for each breaker. Daisy chaining the trip wires can cause interference, resulting in incorrect or unreliable operation. Each shunt trip breaker must have its own individual trip wire. The trip wire should be connected directly to the fire suppression system's control unit. Do not splice or join the trip wires in any way. Follow these steps for proper wiring of shunt trip breakers with a fire suppression system. Firstly, install a junction box near the fire suppression system's control unit. Secondly, run six individual trip wires, one for each breaker, from the shunt trip breakers to the junction box. Thirdly, connect the trip wires to the appropriate terminals on the control unit. It is crucial to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the proper wiring and operation of the shunt trip breakers and fire suppression system. Failure to wire the system correctly could compromise its functionality and safety in the event of a fire. When dealing with shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems, always prioritize safety and adherence to established guidelines. Understanding the fundamental principles behind these systems is paramount for ensuring their effective operation and preventing potential hazards. Shunt trip breakers are designed to automatically disconnect power to a circuit in response to a specific trigger, such as a signal from a fire suppression system. This rapid disconnection is crucial in preventing further damage or escalation of a fire. The dedicated trip wire for each breaker serves as a direct and independent communication pathway between the fire suppression system's control unit and the breaker itself. This ensures that when the fire suppression system detects a fire and sends a trip signal, each breaker receives the signal instantaneously and responds accordingly. Daisy chaining, on the other hand, introduces potential points of failure and interference. If one of the connections in the daisy chain becomes loose or faulty, it could disrupt the signal to all subsequent breakers in the chain, rendering them unable to trip in the event of a fire. Furthermore, daisy chaining can create impedance imbalances and signal degradation, further compromising the reliability of the trip signal. The use of a junction box provides a centralized and organized point for connecting the individual trip wires from the breakers to the fire suppression system's control unit. This simplifies the wiring process and makes it easier to troubleshoot any issues that may arise. When connecting the trip wires to the control unit, it is essential to follow the manufacturer's instructions precisely. Incorrect wiring can not only prevent the system from functioning properly, but also create a safety hazard. It is also important to use the correct type and gauge of wire for the trip circuits. The wire should be rated for the voltage and current levels involved, and it should be installed in accordance with applicable electrical codes. Regular inspection and maintenance of the shunt trip breakers and fire suppression system are also crucial for ensuring their continued reliability. This includes checking the wiring connections for tightness and corrosion, testing the operation of the breakers and control unit, and replacing any components that are worn or damaged. In addition to the technical aspects of wiring and maintenance, it is also important to understand the overall function of the fire suppression system and its role in protecting the building and its occupants. The fire suppression system is designed to detect and suppress fires quickly and effectively, minimizing damage and preventing injuries. The shunt trip breakers are an integral part of this system, ensuring that power is automatically disconnected to the affected circuits, further reducing the risk of fire spread and electrical hazards. By following the proper wiring procedures, conducting regular maintenance, and understanding the system's function, you can help ensure the safety and reliability of shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems. This knowledge is essential for anyone involved in the design, installation, or maintenance of these critical safety systems. Furthermore, always consult with qualified professionals and adhere to all applicable codes and regulations to ensure the safety and compliance of your electrical installations. The National Electrical Code, or NEC, provides comprehensive guidelines for electrical installations, including those involving shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems. Adherence to the NEC is essential for ensuring the safety and reliability of electrical systems. It is important to consult the NEC and other applicable standards and regulations to ensure that your electrical installations meet all requirements.
always refer to the product documentation that comes with the shunt trip breakers and fire suppression system components. These documents contain critical information about the specific models being used, including wiring diagrams, operating instructions, and safety precautions. Ignoring the manufacturer's instructions can lead to improper installation, malfunction, and potential safety hazard. Consider the environmental conditions in which the shunt trip breakers and fire suppression system are installed. Factors such as temperature, humidity, and exposure to corrosive substances can affect the performance and lifespan of these components. Ensure that the components are rated for the environmental conditions in the installation location and take appropriate measures to protect them from damage. The importance of proper grounding cannot be overstated. Grounding provides a path for fault current to flow back to the source, tripping the breaker and preventing electrical shock hazards. Ensure that all electrical equipment, including shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems, is properly grounded in accordance with applicable codes and standards. Regular testing of the shunt trip breakers and fire suppression system is essential for ensuring their continued reliability. Testing should be performed periodically, typically at least annually, to verify that all components are functioning properly. Keep detailed records of all testing and maintenance activities. These records can be valuable for troubleshooting problems and demonstrating compliance with applicable codes and regulations. In addition to the technical aspects of shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems, it is also important to consider the human element. Ensure that all personnel who work on or around these systems are properly trained and qualified. Training should cover the proper installation, operation, maintenance, and troubleshooting of these systems. Emphasize the importance of safety and adherence to established procedures. A thorough understanding of the interaction between the fire suppression system and the shunt trip breaker is important. The fire suppression system has sensors such as heat, smoke, or flame detectors. When a fire is detected, these sensors send a signal to the control panel of the fire suppression system. The control panel then activates the fire suppression system, which may involve releasing extinguishing agents such as water, foam, or dry chemicals. Simultaneously, the control panel sends a signal to the shunt trip breakers, causing them to trip and disconnect power to the protected circuits. The coordination between the fire suppression system and the shunt trip breakers is crucial for effectively suppressing fires and preventing further damage. The shunt trip breakers to energize electrical equipment that could contribute to the fire or pose an electrical shock hazard to firefighters or other personnel. The specific wiring configuration for shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems can vary depending on the application and the specific equipment being used. However, the basic principle remains the same meat shunt trip break must have its own dedicated trip wire that is connected directly to the fire suppression system's control unit. The control unit provides the necessary voltage and current to activate the shunt trip mechanism in the breaker when a fire is detected. The voltage and current requirements for the shunt trip mechanism vary depending on the breaker manufacturer and model. It is essential to consult the manufacturer's specifications to ensure that the correct voltage and current are applied. In some cases, the fire suppression system's control unit may not be able to provide the required voltage and current for the shunt trip mechanism. In these situations, an auxiliary power supply may be required. The auxiliary power supply should be sized to provide sufficient power for all of the shunt trip breakers in the system. The auxiliary power supply should also be equipped with a battery backup to ensure that the shunt trip breakers will operate even in the event of a power outage. The NEC provides specific requirements for the wiring and installation of shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems. For example, NEC section 760. 41 covers the wiring of fire alarm circuits, including those used for shunt trip breakers. NEC section 760. 41 requires that fire alarm circuits be installed in a manner that prevents them from being damaged or disrupted. The NEC also requires that fire alarm circuits be electrically supervised to ensure that they are functioning properly. Electrical supervision involves monitoring the circuit for opens, shorts, and grounds. If a fault is detected, the supervisory circuit will activate an alarm signal. 
In addition to the NEC, there may be other applicable codes and standards that govern the installation of shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems. These codes and standards may vary depending on the jurisdiction. It is important to consult with local authorities to determine the specific requirements for your area. Proper documentation is essential for ensuring the continued reliability and safety of shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems. Documentation should include wiring diagrams, equipment specifications, testing records, and maintenance records. The documentation should be kept in a safe and accessible location. The documentation should be reviewed and updated periodically to reflect any changes to the system. Shunt trip breakers and fire suppression systems are critical safety systems that protect people and property from fire hazards. Proper installation, maintenance and testing are essential for ensuring the reliable operation of these systems. Always consult with qualified professionals and adhere to all applicable codes and regulations to ensure the safety and compliance of your electrical installations. In conclusion, do not daisy chain shunt trip breakers. Each breaker must have its own dedicated trip wire connected directly to the fire suppression system's control unit. This ensures reliable operation and prevents potential safety hazards in the event of a fire.